Hi, how you doing? In this video, we're going to spend an awful lot of time answering a question pretty much everyone already thinks they know the answer to. The term Champion of England, or Champion of All England, is one I use often here on this channel, and it's one that's generally used within boxing history. We pretty much all agree that James Figg was the first ever Champion of England, followed by Broughton, and then on through Slack, Johnson, Mendoza, Belcher, etc, etc. However, it turns out not to be anything like that simple. This video is going to cover a number of possibilities, so we'll start with the most pedantic one of all. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll see that it wasn't actually that pedantic after all. Legend has it that a nobleman by the name of Roger Marmion held the title of Champion of Normandy in the 11th century. There's very little evidence to prove this, but what we do know is that during the First English Civil War, often referred to simply as the Anarchy, he was granted the title of Baron of Tamworth, his son, Robert Marmion, successfully defended the castle of Falais in 1140 against Geoffrey of Anjou. After this, he began to be referred to as Champion of Normandy and England. It's a ceremonial role that involves being present at the coronation of the monarch and challenging all comers who might question the monarch's right to the title. As with the majority of titles like this, it was entirely hereditary, and by the 14th century it had passed to the Dymoke family. And while the issuing of a formal challenge whilst wearing a full harness was dropped after the coronation of George IV, Francis John Fane Marmion Dymoke, 34th of Scrivelsby and 8th of Tetford, carried the royal standard at the coronation of King Charles III earlier this year. So Robert Marmion was technically the first champion of England. I accept that this is ridiculously pedantic, but I deliberately started with it because it's important to note exactly what the word champion actually means. It wasn't used in a sporting context until well into the 18th century, and so when it did start to be used in a boxing sense, we can see that a single man issuing an open challenge to all comers to fight him for the title of champion was not actually that far removed from the original heraldic role. But all this being said, it was clearly fake, right? Well, no. Not only do we have little to no evidence that Fig was ever actually a boxer, he never seems to have claimed the title of champion. Never. And so, by default, that must mean that the actual champion was Jack Broughton. Well, no. He never claimed it either. He was described by Godfrey as Brave Broughton, Captain of the Boxers, but never as champion. All of the records and descriptions we have of him holding the title of champion and losing that title to Slack seem to have been written some time after the fact. Writers like Egan retrofitting what they knew about boxing onto the names from the past. And while there's a reasonable argument to be made that the title of champion was effectively a gift from the fancy, those rich influential men who controlled boxing, it's stretching that somewhat for them to gift it historically to someone who never held or claimed it at the time. So if it wasn't Fig, and it wasn't Broughton, who was it? Well, there are two possibilities. The first is Tom Johnson, the man who saved boxing and gave it back its respectability. I don't say this because he's personally one of my favourites, but because he's the first of the great boxers of the pugilistic era to use the title at the time. On the 22nd of December 1787, the Bristol Journal said, while discussing the fight between Ryan and Johnson, each had often been victorious and neither ever defeated, and being of the first class of fighters in point of strength and size, the event of this day was to decide who should in future be considered the first champion of boxing. Later, when reporting on his fight with Isaac Perrins, he was described as Johnson, the champion of England. And when Benjamin Brain issued his challenge to Johnson, he said, Having called yourself the champion of England, I cannot suppose you will refuse the above terms without suffering yourself to be called a coward. So there we have it. Thomas Jackling of Derbyshire, who fought as Tom Johnson, was the first ever champion of England. Or was he? There's one more contender for the title. But you're going to have to wait for part two to find out who I think that was. In the meantime, stick something in the comments section under this video letting me know who you consider to be the first champion. Let's see how many people get it before I publish part two. You may have noticed that I've been publishing daily videos for something like 50 days now. 
I'd love to keep going forever doing this, but in reality this was an experiment to see if it was possible for me to come a little closer to making a living from YouTube. In fairness, there's not a lot that would make me happier than being able to research old stories and unusual fighting styles and share them with you guys, but the last couple of months have shown me that that's probably not going to happen. I'm considering making a video detailing exactly how much work it's been and what I've got back for the work in terms of money from YouTube. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing, let me know. In the meantime, please subscribe and consider supporting me either as a member here or over at Patreon. And to those of you still here at the very end of the video, Fight Team.